So if you want, we can just go ahead and get started. Sure. All right. So um, I guess the, one of the big questions me and my audience would like to know is like, why was the show canceled and why did it only get one season and how did that all go down? What, what are you, what's your take on all that? Um, I, I don't know why. I don't, you know, like, I think that the, uh, the market for repossession shows is pretty saturated. I mean, our, and I think in Australia there was two seasons. Um, you know, there was, there was four big repossession shows on. And, uh, you know, the first, uh, we actually received more viewers the first a couple episodes in the Jersey Shore today. I think we have 1.6 million households that watch the show. Um, and, you know, they, uh, you know, I don't know. To me, it wasn't smart thinking. There was so much to pen off of that uh, they just want to do fast and loose and try and, um, you know, like ride the coattails of Jersey Shore. And, um, there were I don't know it, it wasn't really my call, but it was a you know, it was a good experience for for my family. So it's um, you know, I mean, how many people say they had a TV show, right? Uh, so if I'm remembering remembering correctly, it was your show that was the first towing show, or was it uh, Operation Repo? I can't remember. I think it was Operation Repo that was first. Oh okay. Um, yeah, because I remember I was uh, really into your show, and then Lizard Lick Toe came out, and that was a good one. And then your show kind of just like disappeared. I always wondered what happened to it. Yeah, I mean, like uh, I like I said, I it made two seasons on A and E down in Australia, um, and um, but you know, I don't know, you know, the the uh, me and the producers got in a couple fights over this because you know they used to tell me. Now, what do you do for a living? I'm like, well, you know what I do for a living. They said, well, you know, we make TV shows, and I'm like, well, I don't see one you made that made more than one season, so you ain't doing something right. So, um, um, I don't know. They, there was so much more they could have done. I mean, you know, I was a single father. My son was, uh, you know, his mother was an addict, and you know, um, you know, um, you know, they wanted to just turn to like slapstick. Um, Jersey Shore reality crap instead of, you know, some of the things that other people would have liked to see. And, um, but it wasn't my call. So you, you mentioned that there was a second season in Australia. Is that something you have access to that you could release or no? I have no access to that at all. All right. Just wondering. Um, now, how did your company get picked for the show? I mean, did you like know somebody at True TV or? No, actually, remember, this wasn't True TV at first. This was um, Bischoff Hervey Entertainment. Um, and the, the New York Times had done an article. Did, they did an article on me in, uh, uh, I think it was like 2003 or four. Um, and then at the height of Jersey Shore, you know, I guess they were, they, they must have been Googling, um, you know, um, repossession companies in Jersey <laughs> and um, I remember I, I I'd worked like three days in a row I was so tired and I and you know my office already called me like uh, you know Hollywood because of the New York Times article and I remember getting a phone call and, and I thought it was I thought it was a prank you know and after I got done MF and the guy on the phone um, <laughs> you know, they told me I got like five minutes to call back where I wasn't going to have a show. So I called back. I'm like, oh, what did I just do? So, I, you know, I was able to call back and, you know, and, and they, they actually contacted me. So. So what did you do like immediately after like the cameras went away, the show was done? What, how was your life after the show? It was different because, um, um, when, when you were filming, you know, I, I really couldn't do any work work. Um, you know, uh, the couple of repos that I did while the TV show was was on um, were few and far between. They actually took the camera crew to one and they, I think they peed their pants. Um, and, um, but a lot of my clients who were Fortune 500 companies or Fortune 1000 companies, I mean, I'm, I was a guy that put Delta Airlines, well, not out of business, but I, I was the reason why they, they filed bankruptcy. I, I, Want to go repossess their plane at the Newark airport? I didn't. I never did like 
cars and I mean I started doing cars but I, I'm the guy who did everything else that everybody else couldn't do but a lot of my clients were fearful that um, that they were going to have their 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 um, you know their credit their, their creditors uh, vehicles on the air so almost all of them dropped my company almost immediately <clears throat> and the insurance company wouldn't even assure me for repossessions anymore. So it was, um, I'm not so sure I would do it again if I had the opportunity. That actually leads me into the next question. Um, I did Google the actual company, Bear Swamp Recovery, and it says permanently closed. Is that because of what you just described? The You know, yeah, well, it was one of the reasons. I, I'll be honest with you. By the time the show came out, I had been, I had been, doing um recovery work for as long as i can remember in the last five years of the company for the show i actually did nationwide you know uh work and uh and, and it's it's ironic it's kind of funny how i got into the business i mean um um you know but to it, it offered me an opportunity as a single father to go to work when my son was sleeping and then be there when he woke up and uh, take him to school and all the rest of that stuff. So um, it's one of the reasons why I got out of the other businesses I was in and, and, and start doing this, you know, start doing that. And then after all those years of doing it, I'm like, you know, I was, um, <clears throat> there was a little bit of a lull period. And then um, after um, Sandy hit, um, there was a couple guys that, um, or, well, let's just say that they were being miscreants down the shore, and they had beat up a couple of the other repossessors, and I got called out of retirement by a couple of companies. And I probably repossessed like 60 or 70 pieces of equipment total. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, I, I I lost the flavor for it. I was much older at the time, and, and um I, I got called yesterday to try and go back into the business again, and I just refuse to do it, you know. So, and it's not something that my son can do. He has a vision problem, so he can't take the chance of being hit in the head with a two by four. So, um, you know, it is what it is. You change your life, you change, you know, what you do, and and you move on. And so, I was ready for a career change anyhow. So, okay. So you're not doing repos anymore. So, what exactly do you do now? Well, my background was, you know, always in construction, and then I had an environmental consulting firm, um, and the asset management, you know, kind of. Um, I, I do nothing but commercial real estate now. That's all I do. Um, you know, as much as they love for me to go, go back into the repossession business again, I just I have no desire. I'm 57 years old, and um, where that was cool when I was in my 30s and 40s. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm past that now. I, I just, I don't have the flavor for it. Unless the check is really large. If the check is really large, I might think about that one. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth. All right, so a few more questions. Um, so other than your show, what would you say was your other favorite, or your favorite out of the repo shows? None. None? You didn't like any of them? No, because they, they were all, you know, like... Um, the scenarios that the producers tried to get us to adhere to was beyond stupid. It's like, you know, they kept on trying to invent situations that were, you know, more sensationalized than the, the last one that was, you know, that was always, um, it, it was a shit show, you know? And then like I said, the one time I did take them on a repossession, actual live repossession, I mean, they, they I think one, I think the camera crew peed their pants. Um, and I don't like, you know, and, and I understand their position that, you know, like 90% of what I did in the repossession business was boring. It was boilerplate bull, you know, paperwork, banks, crap. Um, and, you know, they could just leave a film crew 24 7 to wait to see what happens. So they had to invent things. But there was, you know, to me, there was more. There, there should have been more in depth of everything rather than what there was, you know, the, 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 you know, the struggles as a single father, the fact that I, that I'm a Mason and, you know, the time Jesse Ventura show was on the, uh, you know, the, 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 
you know, the ups and downs of the relationships with my father, the struggles in business with people not paying their bills and fights with the banks. I mean, nobody likes banks. And when I suggest you like one of the banks at the time, I had a three hundred eighty thousand dollar lawsuit against them. And, you know, they didn't want to pick up any of that stuff. They just wanted to be like you know, quick fly, get it done, make it look like Jersey Shore, package it, bow it up and sell it to a network, which is what, you know, Bischoff Entertainment did. And his partner was the guy that had the. Uh, WCW, one of the one of the wrestling things he did. So that's that was her that was her that was her shtick, and um, not good for them. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, so it, it's cigar time. <laughs> so I think you pretty much confirmed it. But my next question is: Was the show scripted? Uh, scripted? No, they wanted to evolve naturally. Which was a bunch of horse. Um, everything that you see on television is uh, not what you think it is, um, and uh, the the people that you see on television um, that I've met are there are some nice people. I've met some nice people. I really have, but I've met some people that were the biggest holes you ever met in your entire life, and I've worked with nothing but mobsters my whole life, taking their crap and. These mobsters couldn't put a patch on Hollywood's ass. So all those repos you see on the show were legit? Legitimately fake. Legitimately fake. Explain that a little bit. No, not, not one repo that you see on television was real. They wanted, and, and, and there's a disclaimer at the end when they're doing this, is, is that they're not real. Um, they're supposed to be um, realistic reoccurrences of things that actually happened in the field, which I don't know how the producers of the show came up with that aspect because they never asked me. They actually asked me one time to, um, uh, for me, I, I remember one of the episodes we repossessed a bunch of motorcycles. Uh, yeah, that was my favorite episode, actually. That was that was all fake? Oh, 100%. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said to him, I said to him, you want me to take Two of my guys, me and another guy, two guys, to repossess 10 motorcycles from a bike gang. I said, do I look fucking stupid to you? Do you really think that I would take, you know, two guys, just me and another guy to go repossess 10 motorcycles and get our ass beat by 10 bikers? Are you out of your mind? I mean, I, I mean to me, it was just Looney Tune. And I forced them to hire, you know, they hired the, the Trenton football team to to be my uh, my, my um and a couple other guys to 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 work with me because I told them I adamantly refused to do it because it would make me look like an idiot. <laughs> so the guys that you were fighting in that scene were just actors. And every scene and every show that you ever seen on TV for any of the repo shows, <laughs> none of them are real. That's actually pretty funny. <clears throat> um. So of, of all the episodes, which one would you say is your favorite? Uh. I don't know. I, I really never really thought about which one was my favorite. Um, um, you know, obviously, the ones that involved me, my father, and my son uh, were my favorite. Now that my father's passed away, um, um, you know, to me, as I always told my father when he was still alive, that, you know, this would always make um, good family um, memories. And so... You know, he died in January, so you know, I've caught myself a couple times looking at the videos where it was me, my father, and my son, you know, that danced down memory lane. So I don't know if I have a real favorite one. Um, it was, a, it, all of them were a unique experience, but, uh, you know, um, it, it was surreal. You know, I had uh, two personal assistants at all time. I, I mean... I couldn't even answer my damn phone. Uh, it was um, it was surreal. It really was. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry to hear about uh, your dad passing away. And, Thank you. And it's really nice to have you come on the show here. Um, that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss about the show or anything else you wanted to add? Uh, there's nothing really to add here. I mean, um, you know, the, the shame about it is, is that, you know, they're, 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 a lot of there's a lot of good people that you see on television 
And um, there's, well, I can't, I refuse to name names, um, but there are some people that I met that from other reality shows that are despicable human beings, <laughs> that they allowed the fame to go right to their head and um, they are just despicable human beings. Um, uh, and, and I didn't really understand the, the depravity of, of Hollywood until I actually you know, lived it. Um, these people are morally bankrupt. And there's no other way to put that. They're just morally bankrupt. And um, I don't know. I mean, um, I'm still friends with a lot of the crew. Um, I'm still friends with some of the other people that had reality TV shows that are very, very, very nice people. Um, but you know, it's just it's it's just surreal. It really, truly is. So, uh, well, life is big enough of a reality. They don't they don't need to exacerbate it too much. But it's sensationalism TV. It's sensationalism news. It's sensationalism everything to get the uh, the you know to be. Uh, more dramatic than the, the last guy, no matter what you're watching on television. And um, it's actually sad commentary to, you know, to uh, the, the public sometimes. They are, have the inability to critically think about anything. You know, so uh, just everybody needs to know, this, you know, just know that what you're watching on television, I don't care what you're watching, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, the reality TV show, it's all a lie. And especially True TV. I mean, they stand out more than anybody as be being fake, at least back then. I mean, wouldn't you? Well, agree? yeah. I, I mean, like the lady that ran the network, Angel. Um, um, she she's a nice lady. She's a Jersey girl, actually. But you know, she had a responsibility to the stockholders to, you know, to 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 you know, make profit. You don't make profit unless you have viewers and sell advertisement. Uh, so she was throwing shit against the wall to try and hope something stick, and she did with Impractical Jokers. I mean, they had their own movie. They, that was a spectacular show. Um, but um, you know, you're right. You know, it's, it's all bullshit. And I don't care what network you watch. I mean, they're all, they're all the same. Is that why they moved away from the drama and the towing shows, and they went more towards the comedy? Uh, you know, it, it was working for them. I mean, if, if I was in Angel's position, I would probably have done the. Uh, the, the same thing. I mean, because you know, it's not. They move away from one that's not working. And again, they saturated the market with this. I mean, the uh, Miami Toe was uh, the Jennifer Lopez's uh, uh, adventure. Um, they True TV had three of their own. Then they came out with the airplane repo and um, and everything else. And um, it just it just flooded the market. And I mean, the public can only take so much of that shit. And um, and that's why I impressed them. I, I begged them. I said, you know. You know, pull away from the repossession angle of what you're doing and focus on the family aspect, which is the dynamic for that was, to me, a lot more interesting than, you know, me going out and repossessing a bulldozer and getting into a fight with 65,000 wannabe gangsters, you know I mean? I, you know, and, and, um, and they, they just wanted no parts of it. So I, I told them about halfway through the first year, I, I you know, I, we're doing us. I told them, this is not going to last a year. You're, you're not going to make more than one episode here. It's just not going to happen, right? So, and I, unfortunately, I was right. And um, But like I said, it was a good experience. Uh, you know, um, and I still get fans that call and write me letters and, and, and stuff, and I'm greatly appreciative of those people and uh, asking why it's not on the air anymore and, and whatnot. And... Um, <laughs> Fame's a bitch, I gotta tell you. Fame was a bitch. <laughs> I can only imagine. No, you can't. It's, it's bizarre. It's really, really. I couldn't imagine being like somebody like Brad Pitt. I, I couldn't. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't even leave my house oh. uh, when it was on, especially here in Jersey. I couldn't. I couldn't leave my house. Everywhere I went, it was, you know. Uh, I, I remember one time, my my girlfriend at the time, um, she uh, bought me tickets to go see Jeff Dunham. I think Jeff's kind of funny and. And I, I, you know, made it to the front door. Someone turned around and said, hey, you're that guy from Bear Swamp. And I didn't even make it in the door. I sat there for three hours, signed autographs, take pictures, which was fine. You know, I mean, like the, the one thing that the producer did tell me <laughs> that actually 
resonated with me is that most people will never meet anybody that's on television, ever. And so that I should treat everybody who approaches me for an autograph or a picture to be gracious because it may be the only time they ever meet anybody that was actually on television. So I always kind of did that for everybody regardless of where I was. That's really humble of you. Mm. Just because you're sure TV doesn't mean you had to be a dick. And those guys that were dicks, they know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, they would walk around the crowd and not say hello or shake hands or give an autograph or a picture, yet the people that they were snubbing were the people that were keeping them on the air. Hmm. Like, what the hell is wrong with you morons? Unbelievable. Um, that's it. It's in, it's in the record books, and um, then we move onward and upward. Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Enjoy your night, and uh, good, God bless everybody. Stay safe. All right, I'll keep in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.